Scene 53. Hey y'all, APG Jamie here at My Purple Door Studios. I had demounted my woodblock stamps uh, some time ago and put them in page protectors in my binders. Yeah, my acrylic stamps are in there too, but now they're really getting sad. The page protectors are starting to break down and besides, it's very aggravating to try and get the stupid things out of those page protectors. I have to dig out a stamp from the bottom and no, I didn't want that one. I wanted something else and do you see how these things are tearing up? Oh, I don't want to have to replace these every two or three years. So the other day, while I was watching Patty Tolly Parish, she was showing us how she puts the clean stuff on her demounted and acrylic stamps so they would stick to these fancy, slick, and sturdy pages that she puts in a binder. And uh, yeah, ta-da! Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da! It occurred to me that I could make my own fancy, slick, and sturdy pages and this is how I'm doing it. Last year I had bought this huge honking big 19 by 24 inch Bristol paper. It was a extra, I don't know, 50% off clearance price and I thought it would be perfect for this project. That's not why I bought it. I bought it because it was cheap. <laughs> yes, cheap. Anyway, because it's heavier than the normal cardstock I have and uh, I already have it and I didn't want to buy anything which you know makes Johnny happy and that makes me happy so I cut down the Bristol to measure eight and three quarters by ten and a half inches so it would fit in the laminating thing with a fair amount of space between the paper and uh, so the laminating laminate stuff would stick to itself. Hmm. Anyway, I'm thinking if when I run out of this Bristol, I will just use a double layer of cardstock, trim down to the ten and a half inches, more or less. Um. Or maybe I'll use some poster board. I have some of that hanging around too. And it's pretty close to uh, the heaviness of Bristol. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Whatever. Um, yeah. So I took my uh, eight and three quarters by ten and a half sheet, put it on the scoreboard, and scored it at eight and an eighth. I know very fancy measurement for me. Eight and an eighth. And I will use that for the regular cardstock too if when I switch to that. Um, anyway, I folded over the edge thinking of the Bristol paper, thinking it would sort of reinforce the holes. You'll see that in a little bit. I used a double-sided tape uh, to hold down that folded edge while it runs through the machine because the first one got a little um, pucker on it and not in a kissy pucker kind of way. I load the uh, Bristol paper inside the laminate sheet which itself has fold on it kind of in the middle don't you know. Anyway I try to square my paper up in there because I'm trying to get an even side more or less around uh, the whole perimeter don't quite make it sometimes, but that's just kind of how it goes with me. You'll have whatever kind of laminating sheets you have with your machine. Good luck with that. Um, so I load uh, the machine with the folded edge of the laminate first. The machine grabs it, pulls it through. I'm holding the laminate sheet with a little bit of tension, very little tension, uh, basically so that it stays flat, um, more flat even. Be careful because your machine may be hot. I'm using three mil laminating sh sheets, careful how you say that, so um, yeah, not super hot. 
If you try this, be sure to read the instructions for your machine. Blah, 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 disclaimer. Because I could see some wavy type lines on the paper, I ran it through the machine again, this time with the folded edge, uh, folded paper edge first. Um, that seemed to have gotten rid of the wavy lines and some of the hand gestures are funny. Nespa? So I used a three hole punch and uh, would you look at that? My folded edge didn't quite make it far enough so that I would have the strengthened holes that I thought I would. Well maybe next set. I do get uh, four pages out of uh, the 19 by 24 Bristol with pieces left over. Um, let's see what else. Uh, anyway, with those leftover pieces, I uh, made some tabs. I have this little tab die and I ran it through the Big Shot. I used um, a little bit of label printed from the Dymo. I guess that's how you say it, D-Y-M-O. Anyway, I trimmed uh, that just a little to fit the tabs. I used the ATG to stick the tab um, onto the laminated sheet. I'm pretty sure wet glue would not hold or work for this. And if this ATG stuff doesn't work, then I'll have to find something else later on. I may have to break out my tiny attacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here you can see me taking stamps out of the old page protector and sticking them on the new and improved laminated stamp pages. For my rubber stamps and the other ones that uh, lose their sticky, because it happens. Well, the rubber stamps don't have sticky. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, I put on a dab of Aileen's Tacket over and over. I smoothed that out with my finger so that it's fairly thin. I know. Shocked googly eyes. And uh, make sure it's dry. And uh, ta-da! I have stickage, which works on my acrylic block. And I can still use them without the block just as well too. <laughs> They'll stick to your finger and your desk and your clothes and that uh, Aileen's tack it over and over some pretty good stuff. So um, yeah I think that's about it. Um, oh P.S. I'm redoing my master binder at the same time so it will match up better maybe even more better with the way the stamps are laid out on these new and improved laminated stamp sheets. Remember, if you have a problem, just chillax. Sometimes inspiration will strike and bam a lamb. The solution is found, or in the case of creating art, the um, masterpiece is imagined and comes to life. Alrighty then. Thanks for watching and um, happy arting, y'all. Or really, how I really say it, Joyce, happy arting, y'all.